Hello and welcome to BirdLife Australia's Key Biodiversity Areas Program. I'd like to start off by acknowledging the traditional lands and the traditional owners of the lands on which the Key Biodiversity Areas are on. These lands are the lands of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people and they're the First Nations people of Australia. So let's go through what are key biodiversity areas. Well, we can break that down to KBAs and that's the acronym that I'll be using in this tutorial. The KBAs or our key biodiversity areas are the most important places in the world for species in their habitats. The KBAs are nature's hotspots. They are places of global significance for the conservation of birds and other wildlife which must meet strict international scientific criteria. And that criteria is by the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. KBAs are part of a global program. So the Key Biodiversity Areas Program is an ambitious attempt to identify, map, monitor, and conserve the critical sites for global biodiversity across the planet. KBAs are also part of a national program. So within BirdLife Australia's bird conservation strategy, KBAs sit within the site pillar. So that means that we have to focus our attention on making sure that we've got the best habitat for our native birds. KBAs are also local and they're a great way to get involved in local activities where it might be part of the BirdLife Australia network. So that might be through your bird life branches, community groups, and as individuals connecting with your community. And by doing these activities within a KBA, you're eligible for funding for projects, for example, for running bird workshops or educational events or to support your survey work. So where are Australia's key biodiversity areas? Well, we know that there's over 16,000 of these KBA sites across the world. And in Australia, currently we have 334 key biodiversity areas. Now I will mention that the KBA program is currently undergoing a review to ensure that we are protecting the best hotspots for nature. The KBA program is, is not a static program. It's evolving and it depends entirely on getting the best information, the best data from our wonderful volunteers and staff members so that we can make these decisions about where our KBAs should be. The KBAs have had over 1,000 threatened taxa recorded in these 334 sites. We've got over 100 KBA guardians and over 3,500 volunteers we also partner with various organisations, non-government organisations, governments, land managers and First Nations people, as well as our, as well as our BirdLife branches and other programs. And here, if we zoom in, we can actually see where all of our KBAs are. So there's Tasmania, and if we go up to Victoria, we can see the range of KBAs. And some of these extend across our state borders, and here we are into far north Queensland, extending across into the Northern Territory, where you'll see a range of KBAs. You'll also notice that some areas don't have KBAs. And that is mainly because those areas did not have people nominating sites that would meet the criteria for the KBAs. That might be something that we explore in our review. So a bit of a background of the Key Biodiversity Area Program. We recruit volunteer guardians to keep an eye on our key biodiversity areas. And these guardians complete an annual health check to document how the site is going. So the health check involves sitting at the computer each year. Usually we ask for people to complete this health check in April and going through a series of questions, answering these questions about the state of some of those threatened species that occur within the KBA, how some of those threats might be going and if there's any other pressures that we need to know about, and also 
what other activities are happening? So whether they're volunteer activities by BirdLife volunteers or whether they might be activities by ranger groups or uh, government, so parks and wildlife staff, for instance. So it really gives us a chance to get a bit of information about how the site is going. So who can be a KBA guardian? Well, almost anyone can be. And importantly, you don't have to be a bird expert to be a guardian. You just require that knowledge of what's happening on the ground. So it's the local eyes and the local ears of what's happening at your KBA. It's important to know what's going on in a political sense, because for instance, there might be some development activities near your KBA or within your KBA. So if you can keep an eye on what's happening across news sites, then that's really valuable information. Our KBA guardians are incredibly influential. They're also the first point of call for their KBA. They act as sentinels for local opportunities and threats, and they keep these tabs on their KBA. And they let us know how things are going by completing the annual Easter health check. And they do this through an online portal that BirdLife Australia maintains. If you're not so interested in doing the Easter health check online, there's actually so many ways you can get involved in the Key Biodiversity Areas program. On this slide, you can see that there's a few examples. So you might like doing tree planting days with your local uh, community group. You might like to go on holidays and uh, go bird watching in the areas. And what you can do is actually go on a holiday where you visit a KBA and you might do a bird survey in that area. You could also tell your friends and family about the KBAs near you or near your holiday destination. If you like volunteering on the computer, maybe you like data entry or mapping, then absolutely get in touch. There's always opportunities to be a part of the program. And if you do like to get involved uh, also on the computer, you can explore the KBA through our bird data app, whether it's on your phone or on our website. And you can also sign up to be a guardian for one of the KBAs. If you'd like to do that, then you're welcome to get in touch. So a few next steps. Do a bird data survey in your KBA. Spend time exploring your KBA. Sign up to be a KBA guardian if you like. And complete the annual health check if you are a guardian. You're also entitled to apply for a BirdLife community grant. So get in touch if you're interested in any opportunities around funds to support your bird projects in your KBA. Thanks for listening and for watching. And if you'd like to get in touch, the email is kba at birdlife.org.au. If you'd like to explore more and uh, learn about some of the resources, maps, and other reports that we've got online, visit our website at keybiodiversityareas.org.au. And finally, you can always visit our BirdLife Australia website at birdlife.org.au. Thanks and enjoy spending time in your key biodiversity area.